previously on Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. I used to freaking hate that shark when I was younger, my god. And then the adventure continues. So anyway, earlier I actually talked about the Xbox 360 version of this game, which, uh, I mean, there, there really aren't any major changes aside from the whole, uh, you know, if you die, you don't lose your note progress or anything like that. But there's actually, like, a lot more to it than just that. It's just, uh, they did a whole graphical improvement to not really the characters, but the, uh, kind of the, uh, icons and, like, the, uh, small little details. Nothing really that extreme. But it does look nice. It does look really nice. And it does look like more of a Xbox 360 game as opposed to a N64 game. But perhaps, like, the biggest addition I like most from the Xbox 360 version is that using Xbox Live, you can actually rank your performance through all the levels with other people via Xbox Live. And it's really, really cool because there's just, uh, you know, you really you actually get to compete with other players who have this game. And, like, I, it's, it's really cool, especially when you get a good score and, uh... I don't know, you actually get to see it online as, like, one of the top scores. It's really surreal and awesome. I remember I actually, uh, I believe it was for World 6 of this game. I actually had a really good good score that was ranked in, like, the top 50 at one point. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's just really cool to see yourself on that list. Okay, well, now we're going to go ahead and fly with Kazooie. Um... Let's fly over here, because there's a treasure chest that has good things for us. Oh god. Okay, so yeah. Apparently that Jiggy was for Gruntilda, but I don't care. I wanted to take it for my own games. And there's nothing she can do about it, so screw her. Also, Mumbo Token, I want to grab that. Thank you. Now let's get over here. There's plenty of stuff we have to discover in this level. Like I said before, this level is pretty big. A lot bigger than Mumbo's Mountain, that's for sure. But yeah, I might actually play the 360 version later to see if I can get, like, a another really good score or something. Because I really want to see how far I can take my speedrunning skills. Like, I think I've mentioned in other projects, I'm definitely not a speedrunner by any means. But I like trying, and I like beating games faster than I've beaten them before. Or... That's why I really like rare games, because they usually include the game time on the file select screen, so... Whenever you play the game, you can just take a look at your files and go, Okay, well, this file right here, it's the uh, one that I took the longest to beat, so I'll delete this, keep my other two files, and see if I can uh, get a better score. And then you can see your top three as a result, and then just a lot of other stuff. I really like that about the rare games and how they do that. Like I said, I'm definitely not a speedrunner, but it is really cool to kind of, like, uh, take a look at that kind of stuff. It makes you feel like you're actually good at the game. Even if, if like, theoretically, from a speedrunner's standpoint, you're probably a noob, but still. It's cool. It's cool stuff. One of the joys I get from gaming, I guess you could say. Also, I believe there is a Jiggy down here. Hello, nice to meet you. I am your good friend, Slim Kirby. Allow me to buy you a pretzel. What? You don't like pretzels? I'm sorry to hear that. I have no idea what I'm talking about, by the way. Anyway, I think it's about time we'll go ahead and grab that one uh, honeycomb piece down here. I think no matter what, I am going to get bitten by Snacker at least twice, but let's see what we can do. I'm not going to make any assumptions yet. Okay, well, I got bit once. That's not too bad. 
It could have been a lot worse, I, I assure you. Okay, what else do we have to do? I believe we have something over here we can uh, take a look at. Yes, it's over here. Okay, I see this bucket right here. Me leaky. Me no good for water. Can bear block hole with pebble? Well, I don't have any pebbles, but I have these eggs that kind of look like pebbles. Leaky packed up. Now empty water for bear. So yes, now we can go inside that sand castle, which is actually a very important part of the game. It's a very vital location, but um, we'll be mostly seeing that later on after we've beaten the game and all of that. But we are going to go here to check it out and see what we have in here. Hey, Furball, you're looking for wise. Solve my puzzle and win a prize. Well, I think the answer is on the wall right there, so... We're going to spell the name of the game. If you don't remember how the game is spelled, look at the wall, because it's right there. So yeah, just uh, spell out Banjo-Kazooie, and we'll get our prize. Okay, where's Z? There it is. Okay, there we go. Now I have to destroy this crab and then grab the jiggy. Also, how are you still talking? You're dead. <laughs> okay, well, now that we've done that... Did I grab these two notes? Yes, I did. Let us continue. But yeah, we will actually have to come back here throughout the game. That was the point I was trying to make earlier. I mean, technically you don't have to come back here, but it allows you to get some stuff that you earn and unlock throughout the game, so you might as well come back at some point. Okay, nothing over there. What's that over here? Oh, a one-up. Oh god, a shark. Let's see, let's, let's say Shark Food Island. Let me go to Shark Food Island! Ah! I just wanted to go to Shark Food Island. Can you hold that against me? You would know you're a shark. God, that shark's a jerk. He wants to eat me when all I wanted to do was go to his homeland. I guess Shark Food Island's not much on visitors. Okay, what's... What? Dang it. There's notes in there. Let me in. Thank you. I just wanted to grab your insides. Which sounds terribly, terribly wrong. I don't care. It's a video game. Now, let's follow this place. Okay, looks like we have another puzzle right here. The puzzle of the red X's. Follow the clues if you're looking for gold. Well, the jigsaw pieces are gold, so I guess that is something. It's time to find some gold. Flying makes this a lot easier, although you technically don't have to fly at all to get this jiggy. But again, just makes it easier. 
Plus it allows you to collect some feathers along your way, so... It helps, it helps. This is the last one. Yep, because that island's over there. We have nowhere else to go, so... This has to be the last one. <clears throat> what? Ha, hey, you'll never find me now. Oh, okay. Found you! Also, you're dead. Once again, he died before I killed him. Or, no, he kept talking after I killed him, that's what I meant to say. I don't like when they do that. It takes away all the fun from the kill. I know that sounds incredibly, incredibly harsh, but it's true. Also, did I ever give you back your gold? No, I didn't. Okay, well, I had the gold for you, so here. Me treasure, thank you, me hearties. Take this reward. I'm off to spend, spend, spend. Okay, well, maybe you can gr grab like a hover bolt board or something. I don't know. Okay, well, let us uh, get the last two jiggies. I know where they are. I think I know where all the notes are too. So, oh, there is actually one thing we can get, but I'll get that after I finish off everything else. First, let's fly over here, where the single note lies. And now we've reached the top of Treasure Trove Cove. You could also fly here, but... Eh, I wanted to go the normal way, plus I had to grab that note anyway, so... That works for me. Okay, Yellow Jinjo is right there. Now we just have to grab the last Jiggy, which I believe is on top of this mountain, so let's go ahead and climb this now. It's kind of cool, I kind of did everything in a nice little order. I wouldn't say it's the most optimal order of the level, but still. I still got through everything pretty quickly, considering. I don't really remember what my record is for this level. Also, which switch right here? We'll collect that later. And now if we go in here... More stuff we can do. Including all of the notes. And the last jiggy. It always feels super epic to grab the last Jiggy on the highest point of the level. I don't know, there's just something really cool and epic about that. Anyway, we're going to take a big risk here. Yay, we died! But that's okay, that's okay, nothing wrong with dying. Because we collected all the notes, and collected all the Jinjos, we don't have to worry about collecting anything else. So, we're done with that. Anyway, go over to where this island is, and then fly kind of to the left of it. You'll see a box with the piece above it. That's kind of why I jumped from where I did. I was hoping I would maybe, like, land in the water or something, pick it up and leave, but, um... Unfortunately, uh, that was not on my side. The distance was just too far from where I was for that to even work. But that's actually it for this level. We've collected everything, so now we can leave. And yeah, the sand castle is uh, filled up again, so... Whenever we come back, we'll have to do that again, but we have to do that anyway. It resets whenever you leave the level, so... 
Oh well. Well then, let's go ahead and collect the Jiggy over here. Okay, there we go. Jiggy number three. Uh, anything over here, or is it just, uh... No, just health, okay. Well, I'll keep moving on, then. Before we open up the next level, though, there is a secret little area over here, which we'll uh, check out before we move on. And here, we actually have another picture. Only one problem is there is no pedestal, so we can't actually put pieces into this puzzle yet. This is actually the last world of the game, that's why, so we'll be coming back here much, much later. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk to Brentilda, who's over here. Ugly Grunty's nickname was Hog Breath at Witch School. I also know that Putrid Parrot Puke is her favorite smell- ew. And the old hag's favorite color is gruesome green. Hey, my mom's color's favorite color is green. Not gruesome green, though. If it was gruesome green, I'd probably have a lot of questions for her. Well then, let us continue for greener pastures and much other great stuff. Anyway, we actually have enough uh, notes to open this note door up here, but we still have a world down here we can cover, so we're going to cover that first. Over here, there is a shock jump pad, which will take us to the third puzzle. And now we have the trick that will allow us to put all the pieces down at once, which I really appreciate. Okay, and that'll open Clanker's Cavern. Now, Clanker's Cavern, fun fact, when I was younger, I hated this world. In fact, I hated it so much, I didn't even really start it. But, as time went on, I finally got up the nerve, and finally did this level, and did it proper. And, honestly, it's probably one of the tamest water worlds in the entire game. Or, in the entire universe of video games, for that matter. It's really not that bad. Definitely not bad at all. Okay, well, grunty aside, let's go ahead and go over here. But before we enter the level, we're going to have some fun with switches. Because we can actually unlock World 4 now, too, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Why? Because World 4 is awesome. First, though, we have Brentilda again. Grunty wears a flea circus under that repulsive dress of hers. She's also got this nasty pet dog whose name is Ripper. My sister sings in her own band, Grunty and the Broomstick Boys. They're awful. Well, with a name like Grunty and the Broomstick Boys, I wonder why. But yeah, we'll go ahead and open the sewer pipe, and now we're going to follow it down there and see what's up. And this is the picture for World 4. And yes, we are going to go ahead and unlock it. It'll just save us a lot of time in the long run. Plus, we have the pieces to do it, too, so why not? But yes, Bubble Gloop Swamp. Hey, 
It'll probably be a video or two before we get there, though. For now, we're going to focus on the next lever, which is uh, Clanker's Cavern. Okay, here we go. Just the one new move to find this time, but it's hidden well. Oh god, I don't like the sound of that. So yes, we have to really keep our eyes out for that new move, because apparently bottles hit it very, very well. Where exactly, we'll just have to find out. Anyway, the big theme of this level, as we'll see in just a second, is this giant shark. This is Clanker, the witch's garbage grinder. However, Clanker is not a mean foe. Even if you go straight up to his face, he's not going to eat you. Clanker is a friendly garbage grinder. All he wants is a little bit of fresh air, so we need to help him get some fresh air. The reason why he needs it is because he is actually stuck via a giant anchor at the very bottom of the ocean, or this water area at least. So we should probably free him. Now this is actually kind of tricky because you do run out of air while you're down here. And you have to actually stay down here for a great period of time. However, we have another friend down here who's going to help us with that problem. This is Bloop. Or Gloop. Okay, well, I was close. Gloop will give us air bubbles we can use to uh, stay under here. But what you ultimately want to do is you want to swim through the keyhole, or the key notch, three times. When you do that, you'll release the anchor, and Clanker can swim up and get some fresh air. That's one of his problems. He actually has a lot of problems being a garbage grinder, so... We'll have to uh, do a lot of fixing if we want him to uh, be a healthy garbage grinder again. For one, let's change his diet, because eating garbage is probably not going to do him any good. <laughs> 